Well, I hope this works. Now that I've been driving truck for a while, I wanted to share a couple of my thoughts and a few things that I've been enlightened with driving truck. So this truck is a Freightliner FLD 112. It's got a Cummins M11 in it with an Eaton Fuller Super 10 transmission. So that means with the Super 10, there's really only four lever shifts between gears. We have the sandy little button on the end here. I flip that between every lever shift. Actually, every time I go to shift, I have to flip that button unless I'm um, double shifting, skipping gears. And um, overall, I mean, getting to drive the truck, I'm getting better at it. I wouldn't necessarily say I'm, I'm good at it yet. Um, however, after driving down to Dubuque and back so many times, I mean, I've really come to see why there's a negative or like a angry connotation associated with truckers. Sometimes you'll see it like in movies and stuff. And uh, just driving with traffic. I mean, I have a lot of respect for people who drive semi on the road. Um, it's a tough job, it, it really is. Uh, when I first started doing this, I used to just, being around the truck gave me anxiety because it's like, okay, what's gonna go wrong now? But after now that I've been driving it for a while, I mean, I've learned a lot about the truck. Um, I know what makes it tick, what makes it run, and if something goes wrong, I mean, I've been able to figure out everything that's gone wrong so far. So, the truck's been running really good. Um, my biggest issue, is just with other drivers. Um, I, there's probably been five close calls that I've had now, and most of them have been people, mostly on the four lane. What they'll do is I'll be driving along, minding my own dang business, and a car will come flying up on my left and then immediately cut in front of me, and I can't even see the rear end of their car or over the hood. Um, they're that close. And then for some reason, people love to Sometimes they'll just slam on the brakes, and other times, you know, if they're trying to get off to the exit ramp or something like that, they'll do that right in front of you, and then they'll slam on their brakes. And I don't think a lot of people really get that trucks can't stop on a dime. Um, and that's why I have a lot of respect for people who do this every day for a living. Um, driving a truck, I mean, it's it can be a tough job. Um, I've come to find that it is actually fairly rewarding. Um, now that we've bought the truck for ourselves, we have it on the farm here full time. And unfortunately, we didn't get done with harvest any sooner than last year. Uh, we definitely had an easier time getting the crop moving. Um, if we could haul corn, I mean, I've been hauling corn. And uh, it's been great so far. I think that this year with the weather, we just got set back. And it's just been tough trying to get everything down to the river. Um, Gavilon's not running crazy hours because they're not getting a lot of grain down there right now. Um, I don't know whether that's because farmers are trying to fill up their bins. There is still a lot of standing corn out in the country right now, at least in our area. area. I mean, even right behind me, there's some standing corn out there yet. And um, it's just, I don't know too many people that are done. I often meet trains when I'm taking a load down to Dubuque, but the longest I've actually waited was about 30 minutes. Um, so it wasn't too terrible. Um, I try to have some patience when hauling because everybody's got to get to somewhere, you know. And um, the lines down at Gavilon haven't been bad. Uh, they were actually worse this spring when I was hauling last year's crop out of the bin. And uh, right now, I mean, I'm not waiting at all when I go down there. It's it's in and I'm right back out. My return trip takes, all, all in all, going down there and back takes an hour and a half from the farm. And a lot of our farms are kind of trickling away from the main farm north. So if we're on, say, Burton, it's gonna tack on at least another 15, 20 minutes, just because I have another two hills that I gotta go up. And those take most of that time going the one way out when I'm loaded, because uh, my biggest complaint with this truck is that it just doesn't have enough horsepower, honestly. Um, but in my eyes, she gets the job done. Um, going up hills and stuff like that, I might have to shift down. But with the Super 10 transmission, I mean, it's pretty easy, I think, to shift between gears. Um, 
once I got the hang of it. I, I still grind. I mean, it's not something that I've cured by any means. Wow. Uh, but I hope that as I continue to drive this truck, I'll continue to get better with experience. It's to be expected, I would think. Now, I actually had my first run-in with the scale uh, about a week ago now, and um, it was, I mean, I wasn't overloaded. I was at 87,000. However, I was overloaded on the back of the semi. So have you ever shoveled 4,000 pounds of corn 40 feet to the front of a semi? Me neither, because I couldn't do it in an hour by myself with a little dirt shovel that they had. <laughs> uh, they didn't really have like a good scoop shovel or anything like that. I spent an hour trying to shovel 4,000 pounds of corn off the back end of this truck. And I don't, I think I got like a thousand pounds in an hour, um, but I only had like a little itty bitty dirt shovel. It wasn't a decent one by any means. And um, I pulled in down there and I had anxiety mostly over like my registration and stuff like that, making sure that I had everything in line and all my paperwork. Um, I mean, the weight, um, it is what it is. I didn't know a whole lot about like how much weight I had or what, it, what is even legal per axle. Um, I knew what it was, but with this truck, with the dynamics on it, um, there was never really no good way for me to know what the pressure gauges were supposed to be and where the weight was supposed to be placed on the trailer. So after I had gone through the scale, I was 4,000 pounds overweight on the back, which to me blew my mind because I had been loading the front heavier. And even right now, I mean, you fill up the front full, like overloaded, it looks to be overloaded, but there's still weight on the back. I mean, with this trailer, I don't know whether the front hoppers, it's just something about the weight disbursement. Um, you pretty much have to fill the, full, the front completely full and then just put like a dump on the back to make sure that you're um, properly weighted down. So it's actually hard with this truck or this trailer because it's got the higher sides on it. Um, when you start loading it, you can't really tell where it needs to be. And now that I'm working with the pressure gauges, I figured out that the pressure gauges both need to read about 80 PSI and you will be good. You'll be around 92,000 pounds and your weight disbursement on the axles will be good enough to where you can be legal. So that load that I actually took down, um, I told Travis to shut it off, but there was still a lot of, for how fast the closing gate, the um, opening gate closes on the Unverfirth, um, at the time that it took to empty out the auger, he dumped more weight on the back of the tra truck. And I noticed that the pressure gauge back there was like 82 PSI. So I took it down, figured out that you know, if it's over 80 on either the front or back gauges, that it's overweight. And um, I've been using that to kind of work on the truck weight. It's kind of difficult as I'm going through the scale down a Gavilon to figure out what my weight is, but I was noticing that I was overloading it in the back pretty much every time. Um, even though I kept loading the front heavier and heavier and heavier, and it eventually got to the point where now the front has to be like overloaded, like overflowing, not overloaded. And the back just has to have like one good dump in it and you, you're pretty much golden. When I'm down at Gavilon and going across the scale, I can actually lean forward and watch to see what my weight is. The thing is, it's kind of hard to read what the weight is backwards in the rear view mirror. Um, so what I've been trying to do is keep track of my axle weights as I'm, as I'm pulling across the scale. I just try to pull off real slow and I can see, I record the three weights when I take off my front, middle, and back. And um, I've been noticing that my back's been overloaded. I've been loading it around 41,000 and it needs to be no more than 39,100 pounds. So with time, I've been able to get the weight on the back below that. And I've been getting better at trying to disperse the weight. Um, I'm glad that I actually went into the weigh station. I just got away with a warning because I tried shoveling it out and I couldn't do it. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, you can pull around into the scale um, whenever you think you got it. Because apparently Wisconsin has like an overloading law where if you're 2,000 pounds overweight on an axle, you can go back there and try to move it around. And if you can move it around, you don't get a fine. Well, this tr state trooper was nice enough. When I pulled into the scale, he's like, all right, come in. So I pulled back around and went inside. And I'm like, so how'd I do? Did I get it? And he's like, oh, no. He's like, no, no, you, um, you're still like 3,000 pounds overweight. It's just like, ugh. <laughs> He's like, since you gave it a solid effort, he's like, 
um, I'll let you off with a warning this time. It's like, okay. And they give you a piece of paper that you got to sign and email back to them. Um, and it on there, it said what the weight, how much I was overloaded. And it kind of helps me get the right mindset on how to handle the weight and where to put it on the truck. So those are just a few thoughts that I wanted to share on running truck. Um, I've learned a lot, still learning. And, um, as we continue to harvest, hopefully I don't get pulled into the scale again, but I'm going to be able to pull in, in there with a lot more confidence now that I know that I'm not overloading an axle. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching guys. Be sure to check out all of our other videos. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat, all how farms work. And be sure to stay tuned for more harvest videos. I'll see you next time.